everybody. Welcome to the Thai Life Homestead. I'm Michelle. I'm in the chicken coop today to talk about some not so fun things about having backyard chickens or homestead free range chickens. Um, over the course of the past couple of weeks, we've run into a number of problems here in the coop. Um, the number one problem is the scaly leg mites. So this is definitely something that I've never heard of before. Uh, it's a really bad um, mite infestation that happens to your chicken's legs. It's pretty easy to spot because um, their legs look absolutely horrible and crusty and painful with big sort of scabs all, all over them. Um, it is painful for the chickens as well. And another thing is that some of my hens were losing some feathers on their back, which I thought was from being oversexed when we had three roosters, but apparently that's not the case. Um, as it turns out, they have lice. <laughs> um, so these two things that I've mentioned so far, just for the record, cannot be transferred to humans or dogs. So thank goodness. I just want to go over, it's been a week since I've discovered these issues. Um, we have been treating them and I wanted to go over a few of the different ways that I've been treating them and sort of give you guys some ide different ideas of way that, ways that you can treat this um, problem if you have it, which I think is it's a pretty common problem when you have uh, free range chickens and backyard chickens. So with the scaly leg mites, the first thing that I did was I went to the vet. I drove to our nearest town and brought a picture of um, Poke, who's my rooster, he has the worst case for sure. Um, hi, Poke. So I went to the vet and showed them a picture and they gave me some drops. It's a type of ivermectin that you apply to the backs of their necks. So I did that last Monday and I really didn't see any improvement. Like even I thought, you know, at least three, two, three days, you'd see some sort of improvement, which I did not. Um, the other thing that I read actually on YouTube was to apply copious amounts of Vaseline to their feet. It's been three days since I put the drops on the back of their necks and I haven't seen a huge improvement on their feet. Uh, so I'm going to use the old farmer's trick which is Vaseline. Did you know that Vaseline is actually called uh, healing jelly now instead of petroleum jelly? I just mm. found that out today. Ooh, I'm just <laughs> anyway, this Vaseline goes on their feet in a big coating. And what it's supposed to do is smother the mites, which are living underneath all of this crustiness. And some people might think that it's gross that I'm not wearing gloves. The truth is that... Woo! Easy <laughs> okay, baby. The truth is that I was going to, but I can't find them. So these don't transfer to humans. This is the one I was talking about. He's got the worst case for sure out of all of them. Oh, yeah. Blackies. Blackies look way better. Yeah. They have the least amount the, the hens do. But see, look at how it goes all the way up the back. Poor guy. I'm so sorry, buddy. Yeah. Okay. I think we got pokey then. Oh, I'm going to need a bigger bottle of Vaseline. To be perfectly honest with you, I've been doing the Vaseline rubs every second day. And I've seen a massive improvement with just using the Vaseline. So if you want to listen to me, I would highly recommend the Vaseline treatment. When it came to the mites and the lice, um, I actually went out and bought a big bag of diatomaceous earth. Um, after we thoroughly cleaned the coop uh, from head to toe, vacuumed it out, scrubbed her down, um, before I laid the new pine shavings down, I sprinkled diatomaceous earth over the entire floor and inside the nesting boxes over here and that is really good for killing mice or sorry for killing lice. Also sprinkle sprinkled the diatomaceous earth where they dust bathe which is up near the house when it's a nice day. 
So that seems to be helping as well because my girl's backs are looking a little bit better. Uh, it does take some time to grow back the feathers, like it could take months. Um, so we're, we're on the road to improvement, but my biggest thing, my biggest reason for doing this video is because I believe that I completely failed at the deep litter method, which is what I was using in my coop and I started it this winter. Now there's two things that need to happen with the deep litter method that I know now. Number one is you need to have really good ventilation. So when we first took over this coop, it was just the wood. I can show you from the outside. It had absolutely zero insulation. It was literally just this wood. So obviously like air holes and everything can get through here. Um, so it actually had really good ventilation. So it probably would have worked quite well for the deep litter method. Um, but because James and I love our chickens so much, we wanted them to be nice and nice and warm in the cold Canadian winter because it does get down to minus 20, sometimes minus 30 here in the winter. Um, James went ahead and got an R5 insulation and put it up all over the coop. So from head to toe, the ceiling's even done. There isn't a ton of circulation in here beside coming up from the floor because the floor is also wood boards. So not as much ventilation as a deep litter, litter method would need. I think that was my number one problem, my number one mistake. The second mistake was when I was adding new litter on top of the old litter, so the pine shavings, on top um, of the poop and then basically asking my girls to stir it up with their feet I was making the mistake of not turning it with a pitchfork and aerating it. Aerating is a very very important thing to do because otherwise it builds up an ammonia um, gas and it is really really bad for the chickens and basically breeding grounds for all of the bad things the mice or the lice probably mice but the lice the mites um potentially worms anything bad like that so felt super bad about all of this um being super honest here with you guys was not my most shining moment um, my chickens are fine we're nursing them back to health but um i will definitely not be using the deep litter method in my coop because of how we have it built um, I probably won't be heating my coop. We did heat the coop on the really, really cold nights. I may not be doing that again because I think chickens can survive to up to minus 20. And I've watched a few other people like the Alaskan couple um, on YouTube that have chickens and they live out in Alaska and they don't even have an um, insulated coop, let alone a heated coop. So, And they have some of the healthiest chickens I've ever seen. Kudos to you guys. Uh, comment if you have any questions or if you have any tips for me um i love my chickens so much they are m like my pets just like my dogs um and yeah i just want them to be happy and healthy they bring me so much joy so thanks for watching you guys have a great day bringing the chickens a little treat some squash squash seeds chopped up garlic strawberry tops Good for deworming them naturally.